The road to Scottish Summit starts here. This is the Power Platform Podcast. Join Rex de Koning, Anna Inez Urrutia de Sousa and Paddy Byrne as they talk to the Microsoft community about their stories. Welcome everyone to the Power Platform Podcast. It's always a thing to get that out right in, in, in once. Uh, today we have our guests, uh, Zoe Wilson and Matt Beard. And uh, most of you probably know them from, from Scottish Summit, but today we're going to hear some more about them. Uh, my name is Rex Koning. I'm one of the hosts. Yeah, I am Paddy Byrne. I am, I'm a co-host uh, Scottish, of the, <laughs> the Scottish Summit. No, not, I got it wrong. We were doing so well. I was just about to make a joke about how we always get the name wrong. It's the Power Platform Podcast. Um, and it's the Road to Scottish Summit series within the Power Platform podcast. And here's me, ruin, ruined everything. Um, so, yeah, we're here with the, the cream of the crop um, to uh, the bottom of the Scottish Summit for a while. Um, Zoe and Matt, do you want to introduce yourselves? Hi, everyone. Thanks for having us on the show. Uh, so I'm Zoe Wilson. Uh, like you said, I've been involved in Scottish Summit for the last few years. Uh, in my day job, I work at Avenard, where I'm a, an exec in our global modern workplace business. Uh, so heavily involved in all of the co-pilot madness for my sins, uh, but doing lots of community stuff as well uh, outside of that. So I host a co-pilot podcast, obviously part of the Scottish Summit team, run a new speakers workshop as well, which I know you uh, attended last year, X. So really focusing on trying to develop that new pipeline of speakers for the community. Uh, and yeah, uh, Matt Beard, I've been uh, de well, development team leader at the moment at Data8. I'm my 11th year now there, so I've been there for a, a fair whack of time. Um, enjoying all stuff, Power Platform, Dynamics, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then yeah, Scottish Summit, I also run the London User Group and do all sorts of things. And I'm a terrible yes man, so I end up doing all sorts of things for all sorts of people. <laughs> Sounds brilliant. Sounds brilliant. Really involved in the community, and we'll, we'll dig into a bit more of those roles um, later. But first, we've got um icebreaker for you that we came up with this spot. This I just to make us feel at ease because we all get nervous on these podcasts. So, so I'm going to start with you. Um, we know that you are a cat lover, right? So, can you list your top three fictional felines and why? <laughs> Gosh, that's a really hard question. I don't even know if I know three fictional. Yeah, top, three, <laughs> top three. I'm struggling for one. Yeah. You, you um, must know. You must know. Um, some, you must have grown up watching cartoons as a kid. Yeah, but I was always more interested in like have, actually having a physical cat there rather than uh, cats, in, cats in TV shows and films and, and things like that. I'm, I'm really struggling. I think like the Cheshire Cat is probably one of the only ones that I can yeah, actually I think, think of. <laughs> Um, I like no mine. mine my, well, one of, mine, one of mine might not count because it's, yeah, I don't know, you can decide. I I love Top Cat. Top Cat was my top favorite yeah. cat. Yeah. Tom um, from Tom and Jerry. Tom from Tom and Jerry is a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what my other one is now. I did have one that sprung to mind just before we started this because I came up with a question and now I can't remember. But my other <laughs> one that might not count is Catwoman because I love Catwoman. She's cool. I yeah, I don't think that counts. Anyway. <laughs> what? No, almost sort of cat. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, stretch. I so think, Esther from Tweety. Yeah, she's not really she's not really like fluffy with claws. I think the tight leather probably has something to do with that. <laughs> the other one that just stuck in mind, but it's not even a cat. I was gonna say Pepe Le Pew. Um do you remember Pepe Le Pew? <laughs> He's not a cat, is he? He's a... <laughs> he falls in love with a cat. Um <laughs> so that, that's probably the most difficult question you're gonna be asked all night, thankfully. Um Matt, very similar question. Um, except I would ask you because we are wrestling, we are wrestling fans, so yours one's easy. Um, so a similar question your Mount Rushmore of professional wrestlers, oh, Jesus, like. my Mount Rushmore of professional wrestlers. Um, who see, I love the really obscure people, like I like Sting, but I like no, okay. I keep obscure. It's like I like like um, Daniel Bryan. But I, uh, yeah, so I was old school. I was always, I love TNA, so I could go all TNA. So AJ Styles. Yep. He's a main well, so Mankind. Mankind. I loved Mankind when I was a kid. The amount of times I put a sock on my hand, that sounds weird out of context. The amount of times I put a sock on my hand <laughs> for wrestling. Um, 
there's a lot. So yeah, there you go. Mankind. I'll put, I'll put, I'll put. In fact, I'll just put all four faces of Foley on there. <laughs> That's a good one. That's really good. So there you go. There's, yeah. my, there's, the, there's my Rushmore. Mankind dude, love Cactus Jack and Mick Foley. Good. So when you played wrestling, you ran off and got sock and put it in your hand to play wrestling, did you? To, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, <laughs> you, used to, you used to make a little belt. You used to make um, championship belts out of cardboard and all sorts. Yeah, so we we did we did that when we were kids as well. Cardboard oh, belt. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> See, I was a wrestler. I've never done a cardboard belt. <laughs> You've not lived. I'll make you on for Aber- I'll make yeah. you on for Aberdeen. You can have it in Aberdeen. I'll bring you on. Yeah, if, if, if someone gets me a cardboard belt, I'll wear it. I'll wear it all day until it falls off. <laughs> so, sold, sold. <laughs> right, that's the most difficult questions out out of the way. Um, Rex, do you want to move on? Yeah, well, you, you all, been, or, uh, both of you all already said something about it in, in the intro. Uh, but during the day, you're, you're busy with all kinds of stuff, professionally and in the community. Can, can you both explain a little what you do professionally and also what you do for the community? I'll let you go first, Matt. Let me go first. Um, so professional-wise, um, I started as a full-stack developer. Uh and we found a disk that said dynamic crm in the office as part of the partner center pack so we installed it um and then we started to enjoy it and then i started to go to user groups and what 11 years later in my role now i sort of mainly head up that whole side of it all now um with i mean we've done well what time are we on 10 minutes in we've not said the c word yet oh no in fact zoe said it before um i'm sorry i've been doing a lot more with copilot stuff recently i've been working with microsoft to get some stuff doing um so the time recording there's all sorts of build announcements coming and dropping and some of the stuff that i was working on was announced over overnight which is nice so it's nice to see the things that i've been working on come to fruition it's interesting that that, that role you're in but at day eight, even people who aren't involved in the community or follow the community seem to know who you are because you've spoke to them through day eight for a professional engagement at some point and um, everybody i know who works in the industry in dynamics it's like, oh, Matt Baird, yeah, I know him because I spoke to him because we're looking at putting data or something like data solution into their, into their implementation. Yeah, so it's, it's strange to get in. I have a conversation that I either get known from data right from Scottish Summit or from the London News Group. Um, and then when I go to a meeting about one of the other three, they know me from the other one. Um, so, yeah, it keeps me busy. And Zoe, what about yourself? Um. So, like I said earlier, work, working as a global practice leader, Avenard, in our modern work business. Uh, so, technically, I, I came up through the SharePoint side. Um, I started when I left uni in kind of IT support. And then back in my early 20s in Leeds, there weren't many women who worked in IT. Uh, so, when I came across SharePoint, it was really good because it gave me an opportunity to get outside of IT and go and talk to the business. And that's where I've really sat through my career at that kind of intersection of what technology can do and the business problems that it solves. And then about eight years ago, I moved into more uh, first team lead and then more leadership type roles. So um, the role that I have at the moment is really broad because as a practice lead, I'm looking after our go-to-market strategy, our alignment with Microsoft, lots of client-facing activities. Uh, for the last year, I've been leading our global co-pilot go-to-market. So I, I got co-pilot before the early access program started for M365 and really pushing in, in all countries that Avenard operates in to um, be able to help our clients on that journey. So it's been a, it's been a pretty full on year, to be honest. Um, and I often joke that, you know, for, for people who are using Copilot as an end user, it can help make them more productive, but it is the one thing that is solely responsible for shafting any semblance of work-life balance that I have. <laughs> 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 yeah, you don't get more time to yourself if you start selling Copilot. <laughs> No, it's it's that it's been absolutely crazy to be honest. But um, I mean, it's been it's been good to have the opportunity to be you know really at the forefront of that at, at mm-hmm. such a big company, um, and then alongside that, all the community stuff keeping me busy as well. So in the last year, we've run two of the new speaker workshops, and we've got another one that we're uh, scheduling for later this year. Uh, I started the Copilot podcast with Kevin McDonnell, uh, and that's not just from a modern work perspective. That's looking across all of the different Copilots. Mm-hmm. So. Um, that's been keeping us busy as well. And then obviously Scottish Summit that we did in Manchester last year and then uh, the road to Scottish Summit in Aberdeen this year. So uh, lots going on both personally and as professionally and community-wise. 
I always, I always, I always feel busy until I speak to Zoe, and then she makes me realise that how much more spare time I've got. Talking about um, Scottish Summit Manchester, we're going to dig into that. What, what's your highlight, or, or have you got any any tales from Scottish Summit past? I imagine I'm just imagining Manchester would play a big part in in those highlights. But can you tell us more about what your highlights from previous Scottish Summits have been? So I think for me, one of the highlights for Scottish Summit last year um, was seeing how much people contributed to the food bank. I know this isn't like a you know a, an event specific thing, but it was just so heart heartwarming mm. both to see how much money we actually raised for uh, for the charity of the event, but um, to see how how much people actually brought for the food bank was really heartwarming, and it's just yeah. a, a a sign of how um, giving our, our our tech community is. And, and showing that it's not only a tech community but a real community also uh, just for the um, people not involved in, in the in, in in the tech community but also for for the for the people who need help and, and because last year uh, all the stuff that was donated uh, i'm not sure if, if matt needed a new springs for his car after that but i can imagine he, he did that's something that hasn't come up on this series so far actually the um, the alignment with charitable causes that Scottish Summit has, because every Scottish Summit since its conception uh, has been aligned with charity. And now it's a registered charity, Scottish Summit. Um, I mean, I don't know the, the stats of the previous charities and how much funds they've raised, but um, that's something for our listeners who don't know Scottish Summit. Um, it's not just about tech. It's about giving back to the community and normally the local community as well where that hosts the event. Yeah, so, so one of the things that you won't see it's the amount of forms that me, Zoe, Mark, and have filled out to make the company get a registered status and, and make it do all its thing and, and do it all properly. Um, we're trying to do it in as many ways as we can, and I think that is the right way of doing it. And to, to piggyback on Zoe's point, particularly around Manchester, so um, for me, biased about the fact that it was a little more local, I thought that Manchester venue was an incredible venue. And mm -hmm. the th one of the things that I think was a testament to how good the Manchester event was, was how much the venue people themselves liked.